Hello and welcome back to our roster and schedule reveal series for our FCS Dynasty in NCAA Football 2006. We're going to be taking a look at the Northern Colorado Bears roster today and getting a look at their schedule for year two. Let's get into it. Darrell Stats, sophomore quarterback, 84 overall. He was pretty good for him last season. He threw for 1,912 yards, 17 touchdowns to 12 picks. And that was, he was also 48% uh, on the season. So he definitely has a lot of room to improve. He did really well on the ground for the Bears. 877 yards on 143 carries, which was good for a 6.1 yard average. And he had 14 touchdowns on the ground, along with 84 yards. He had five fumbles. Uh, so he had 31 total touchdowns last season, which is very good. Uh, but their offense was obviously the better part of the team their defense definitely lacking some players and they still are this season if you're still if you're able to look at the roster right there they still only have the Cooper brothers and that is it well let's go and take a look at the freshman quarterback Aiden Davis and he was a four-star recruit coming out of high school 76 overall six foot seven 215 pounds just a monster a mountain of a man and he will fill in nicely for stats uh, during injuries or suspensions. Or maybe he will dethrone stats and take his starting role. Let's get to the halfbacks. Darius Mitchell, uh, the only junior subscriber player on all of our 12 schools. 5'7", 217 pounds. He's got a 78 overall. He led the team in rushing last season with 1,233 yards. And he had 10 touchdowns as well. And he only had two catches last season for 21 yards. And he had one kick return for a touchdown, 100 yarder, 879 yards on kick returns. But he had three punt returns for scores, uh, 401 yards, a long of 80. So he definitely is a playmaker. He needs the ball in his hands to help this team. And the Bears are looking to do that again this season. Number two halfback, Eric Tavares. They have a really good one-two punch here in Northern Colorado, in Greeley, Colorado. Tavares is 78 overall as well. He's 5'10", 227 pounds. And in year one, he had 1,041 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns, three fumbles, along with 53, 361 yards after contact. He was just fantastic after he was touched. And he averaged 7.7 .7 yards per carry. He also had 12 catches. 176 yards and two touchdowns last season. He also played defense. He had 40 tackles, a sack, a pick, a forced fumble, five pass deflections. He was doing it all for this Bears team. And their number three halfback, freshman Jada Streets. He was a two-star athlete coming out of high school, and he has a 70 overall. He is going to be all over the field playing some receiver, playing some halfback, He's just going to do it all for this offense, and I'm really looking forward to him and seeing what he can do for this team. Now, fullback, sophomore, Gavin Brady, 90 overall. He didn't do a whole lot on offense last year, only two touchdowns on the ground to go along with 267 yards rushing. He had 21 broken tackles, and he had seven catches, 97 yards, so not a big factor on offense at all for this team. He did have 10 tackles on defense and five pass deflections. He did play some linebacker here and there. But hopefully Gavin Brady can come in and make a bigger impact here in year number two for this team. And speaking of not making an impact, Howard Bresnigale, the sole wide receiver of this offense. Sophomore, 78 overall. He's 5'10", 168 pounds. And he did not do a whole lot last year. Just 15 catches, 393 yards four touchdowns he did have a long of 94 yards though and he had six drops so he touched the ball 21 times six of them were drops <laughs> he needs to improve that number uh, quite a bit and he did pretty decent on kick returns no touchdowns but he averaged 24.7 yards per return so hopefully he can improve those numbers as well this coming season and just make a bigger impact overall for this team and the tight end, Smokey Callahan, sophomore, 90 overall. He was the leader for receptions last season with 33. He had, actually it was 31, excuse me, with 710 yards, eight touchdowns, and four drops on the eight, along with 61. 
and he averaged 22.9 yards per catch. So he made a big impact on the offense, probably the biggest. And he also had 24 pancakes, no sacks allowed, so he's a great blocker, just like Max Hawthorne on North Dakota State. We just saw them yesterday. And moving along to the offensive line, Mike Heath and Will Jefferson, both sophomore tackles. Heath coming in with an 84 overall, and Jefferson with an 82 overall. Uh, Mike Heath, he allowed quite a bit of sacks last year, nine sacks allowed, but he had 93 pancakes. So if he gets those sacks allowed numbers to go down just quite a bit, you know, cut that in half and get some more pancakes next year, I think it'll be great for this offense. They definitely need help uh, protecting stats and get this ground game going a little bit more. They, both the running backs did run for over 1,000 yards last season. Tavares with 10, or 11 touchdowns, Mitchell with 10, and of course Stats with a great year running the football as well. But a lot of that was him running for his life against better opponents like Colorado State, which we will see uh, week one against Northern Colorado, the 20th ranked Colorado State Rams. And that is going to be a rematch from year one. And hopefully the Bears fare a little bit better this coming season. Uh, Will Jefferson, uh, the right tackle, 71 pancakes last year, four sacks allowed. Uh, he was pretty good. Sebastian Hernandez did not allow a sack at all last season. 35 pancakes, zero sacks allowed. He was a monster. And that is going to be it for the offense. Let's take a look at the defense. Deacon Cooper. Sophomore, free safety. He's got a 78 overall. Uh, Hernandez with a 90 overall. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but Sebastian Hernandez, 90 overall center. So Northern Colorado with three 90 overall players on their roster. Uh, Deacon Cooper, he had 50, let's see, 50 something, 51 tackles last season, seven picks, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, 11 pass deflections, he was a monster. A lot of big hits last season. I'm looking forward to seeing him and his bully, Cooper, twin brother, uh, number nine, with his 80 overall. He led the team in tackles last season with 71. He had one sack, seven picks as well, six forced fumbles. He is a machine when it comes to hitting players and stripping that ball loose. He had two fumbles recovered, two defensive touchdowns, and 24 pass deflections. So, bully Cooper... Just a slight, uh, slight advantage over his twin brother, Deacon, when it comes to hits. But still, they're both great hitters. And to round out this roster, we have Johnny Ligurski, two-star freshman kicker with a 65 overall. But guess what, folks? That's so much better than the kicker they had last season. And you will definitely see a big difference in leg strength and accuracy for all the kickers that we signed in the recruiting class for year number two. Head coach, Michael Topps, they went seven and six last season. They were Insight Bowl champions. Now let's take a look at the schedule for the Northern Colorado Bears for year number two in our FCS dynasty. Of course, they take on Colorado State. Now that's a rough start for the Bears. I don't know how they're gonna fare in that game. Of course, the Bears do not have a lot of firepower on defense to stop a stacked Rams offense, and they're 20th in the country. But after that, they have a nice little break against Rhode Island from the MAC. That uh, opponent was requested by a subscriber. At one point, I cannot remember your name, sir. I do apologize. But we got Rhode Island on the schedule, so you can check them out in this dynasty. After that, week number three, they'll be traveling to take on the Boise State Broncos. They are not ranked this season in the preseason polls, which is very surprising. They were ranked number one last year. And they showed, they were they blasted everybody that we saw. They lost a couple conference games, and that really derailed their season. And they kind of suffered for it. They didn't get a good bowl game. And their season kind of just fizzled out at the end. Week number four, they host the Sacramento State Hornets. That is the start of their Pac-10 conference football play. Week six, they'll be traveling to take on the Jet Christie-led 22nd ranked UC Davis Aggies and a subscriber versus subscriber matchup. So circle that one on your calendars, folks. Then week seven, they travel again, this time to Eastern Washington to take on the Eagles. They lost to the Eagles in a heartbreaking fashion last season, a kick return for a touchdown as time expired. And that was definitely a heartbreaker for me. 
and it still hurts. After that, they will be hosting the Idaho State Bengals, the doormat of the Pac-10 last season. So maybe an easy win. Let's see. The Bengals might have had a nice recruiting class. I did not check out their roster, so I'm not 100% sure on that. And after that, they'll be traveling to take on another subscriber opponent, the 13th-ranked Cal Poly Mustangs. So a couple subscriber versus subscriber matchups so far. And then we have another one as they host the Southern Utah Thunderbirds. So UNC with three subscriber versus subscriber games. And that will be fun. So three full broadcasts. And I cannot wait to do all of them. It's going to be exciting. And week number 12, they'll travel to Portland State to take on the Vikings. I believe they lost to them last season. Vikings had a couple big upset victories in the Pac-10. They really shook things up. And week 13, they'll host the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks. Uh, the Bears beat them last season, I believe in the last week, to gain bowl eligibility. So hopefully it doesn't come, come down to that this season as well. Because week 15, they'll be hosting the Akron Zips from the MAC. They are a really solid squad, a lot of depth on their team, a lot of speed and strength. So that could be a really tough matchup for the Bears as well. But for Northern Colorado, I expect them to have a similar season like last year. Seven wins. Um, I just don't think that the defense improved enough to really help out this squad. And I think, I think it's going to be a, a rough week for the Bears against the Colorado State Rams. It's, they're just too good. And the Bears don't have any help on defense. So two years in a row, they only have two subscriber players on the defensive side of the football. And it's just not going to get it done. So uh, I'll be surprised if Northern Colorado doesn't get a bowl game. But <laughs> I just I don't see him winning any more than seven games this season, counting the bowl game. So, but we'll see. Who knows? Maybe the defense will step up when they need to. Maybe the offense will just put up 50 points a game, kind of like Oregon in the real life Pac-12. But we shall see. What are your comments, guys? Let me know what you think about the Bears' schedule, about their roster. How many wins do you think they're going to have in year two? I'm really interested to see your predictions. Uh, do that for all of the roster and schedule reveals. So that's it for me today, guys. Tomorrow, I will see you with the San Diego Toreros. Take it easy.